Amen. To God be the glory for all the things he's done. Let's give God some praise and glory, glory this evening. Amen, 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 amen. Tell a friend we're here tonight and we're coming out of St. John 14 and 1. And our lesson tonight is I am the way. On, um, last week we talked about uh, Paul and the road of redemption. Now, in order to be uh, redeemed, you have to know where you uh, redeemed from, and then in order to be redeemed, you got to know what you're following, and who is your redeemer. And so, uh, this evening, we're going to talk about uh, the contrast here is how uh, the one that saved uh, Paul, who was Saul, rather, uh, which is Jesus, and he talked about him being the way. And I, I shared with you last week that that was uh, how Christians was identified back in uh, the biblical days uh, during that time. They didn't call them Christians at first. They called them the way. And if you go back and you look at that's how they were identified as the title, the way. And uh, we have modernized it and said we were Christians. And the reason why we used to say we was Christians because we was Christ-like. But when you do uh, your research, your research will show you that uh, the Christian's uh, real uh, uh, title is The Way. And uh, we'll see here that Jesus shared with his disciples about him being the way and the truth and the light. Uh, can I get a witness? So when we come here, we see in uh, St. John 14, and one, and Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, what was going on here is that it was his, uh, his impending transition, that he was about to transition out this world and transition into glory. But he wanted to let his disciples know that I'm not going to leave you alone. He said that I will leave you or lead you with uh, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And so I share with you to say, um, whenever we are used to something or somebody, whenever we are comfortable with a situation and that situation or that person or thing leave us, it causes us to be troubled. And especially with his disciples who watch so many things that he's done, who've experienced so many of his miracles, who've experienced so much, many of his teachings, and now you're telling us you're going to leave us? Uh, they were in a, a, a precarious situation. You're going you're gonna to leave. What are we going to do now that you're going to leave us? What, what, what are we going to do? Well, one of the things I love here is that what Jesus really wanted them to do is that he said, you know, all that I poured into you, it's time for you to use that and pour into somebody else. You know, oftentimes we sit back and we suck up from people. We suck, we suck, we suck, and we don't learn anything. And then when certain things happen, we look like our world is gone. I mean, it's just like a woman and a man. And, you know, I, I hear vice versa, so don't, women don't get me. But I have hear women or men say, you know, my husband did everything or my wife did everything. You know, well, there's some things you got to learn to do because that person is not going to be with you always. So when that person is gone, then you say, well, they did everything, then you lost. You need to know where everything at. You need to know what the numbers to something. You need to know their accounts, their passwords. You need to know certain things. And so a lot of times, it's basically, we look here with Jesus. I guess many of the disciples could have said, well, Jesus did everything. Huh? And that's why we go back to the saying, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Well, you know, Jesus did everything. What, what, what are we supposed to do? You know, he, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He, he ministered to those. What are we supposed to do? He said, well, you are my disciples. You are my followers. And if you are my disciples and my followers, then you ought to know how to pick up and do what I commanded you to do. I, you know, that's why I'm letting you know. I'm not going to be with you now, but I have a confidence. But you got to pick up and you got to run with this ball. Amen? Can I get a witness? Like, I, ain't gonna, I might not always be here on Sundays, you know? And I might have to say, Minister Gregory, you had to preach Sunday, you know what I'm saying? And things like that, that, you know? A lot of times, I'm not going to always be past here, but when the next man or woman come, God will use them to do what needs to be done. So he says, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
And in my father's house are many mansions. And one of the primary things that he really pointed it out, and he made reference to this, he said, if you believe in God, you have to believe in me. In other words, what he was saying, when people always say, well, you know, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus, impossible. Can I say that again? It's impossible to believe in God and can't believe in Jesus. Because he said, I and my father is what? One more time. I and my father are what? So you cannot believe. That's like you, you marry somebody and you say, well, I, don't, I love you, but I don't love your children. You don't love me. You can't love my children. Hallelujah. Some people even say, I, I marry you, I love you, but I don't love your dog. You can't love me if you don't love Fido, because some people love them dogs. <laughs> they say, you can go, but Fido is going to stay. Amen. Can I get a witness? So what I'm saying is that the father said, you know, we are one. And you can't, you can't love one without the other. So when we're talking about being redeemed, hallelujah, somebody. Now you have to know what it means to be a follower. How, 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 what it means to be delivered. What it means to follow after Christ. Amen? And a lot of times people, they want certain things when it comes to, um, I guess, Christianity or how they want to phrase it. But they don't want all, everything that comes with it. Okay? You know, I want everything that comes with it. I don't want everything. There is no... Unlike you go and you say, I want a pizza, I want anchovies, I want onions, I want green peppers, pepperonis, uh, Italian sauce, you know, all that, you can put all that stuff up there. You can't be saved and say, well, you know, I want to be, you know, I want to do this and I want to do that, but I don't want to do this, I don't want to be redeemed, I don't want to be washed in blood, but I want to do this, but I want to, you can't do it. It's not a la carte. It's not either hot or cold. Lukewarm, I speak out. And that is the issue that we uh, uh, that that's a, that arise not only just in the in the Christendom, but in the world. People want it their way, they want to pick and choose how I want to do certain, even with friendships. Hallelujah. Some people pick and choose how I want to be your friend. Some people pick and choose in relationships. How I want you can't pick and choose. These are the basic fundamentals of certain things, and you can't go against the prick. And a lot of people want to go against the prick. You know why we got to do it? Why is it that when you come, you want to change it? I don't think God meant it that way. Well, what way did it mean? That you was there. Job had to get his wife straight. You know, and that all comes from the derivative of the word selfishness. That means I want it my way. If I can't have it my way, then I, I can't be a part of it. That comes from selfishness. And Jesus told them right, very, very, very plainly here. And when he was referring to mansions, he was referring to dwelling place. Everybody have a lodging for a permanent, secure place, such as a place uh, having already been set aside for all God's children. A dwelling place. He didn't say anything about a house. When you look at the word, we say dwell, you know, that means that you stay there. But when we talk in the spirits about dwelling, it's something um, spiritual about that word. Deep. Yeah, thank you. It's deep when we say we're dwelling. That was a place over on 10 near Chukata. Wasn't it called the dwelling place? That's where we had a, a, a retreat one time. You remember that place? Y'all went all the way down by the water. It was called a dwelling place. And, 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 and when we dwell, especially in, in Christendom, that, like I said, that's deep. We're looking for something. We are expecting something. We are reaching for something. And so God is saying that, that that place in heaven is a dwelling place. It's a spiritual place. It's a wonderful place. Hallelujah, somebody. A place not made by, by, uh, by hands. But he said, listen, I go to prepare so which means that God, Jesus is not only the architect, but he's the builder. He's making sure for every believer, they have a place to dwell over in glory. Hmm? Unlike anything else that the devil had promised anybody, whatever he ever promised anybody. Jesus not only gave you present blessings, he gave you future blessings, because he says in the present, 
I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Isn't that what he said? He says, also, he says in the present, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. He says, in the future, I go to prepare a place for you. And then also in Revelation, it tells us about what's going to be about the 12 gates, about the street, about that Euphrates rivers. It talks about the tree with the uh, leaves for the healing of a nation. Present, future. You're blessed everywhere around. Who, can, who can't beat that? Huh? And not only that, he even said whatever the wicked have, he'll give it to the righteous. Huh? You know? That's why I tell people, when you live right and you do right by God, you ain't got a, 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 a hook and crook and steal. Just be, be, be good. Be cool. What's yours going to be yours? Hallelujah. So he says right here, he says, he says, um, I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Listen. That's when the Bible says that Jesus is coming back for the bride. He is the groom. We're the bride. His brother writes about his return. His brother writes that statement, Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before him. His brother says how the, his brother Jesus will come back to get the church without a spot, wrinkle, or blemish, which is the bride, and present us to his father faultless. Woo. That's why he says in the word, he coming for a church without a spot, wrinkle, or blemish. He come to present us faultless before the living God. So he can't have no isms and no schisms and no mess when he presents us to the father, because with number one, we ain't going to go there no way. If you ain't right, you ain't going up there. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. You know, he said, I'm the way. Amen. You know, we got to go through the, we got to go through the way. Nobody can go through the father but by through the son. And you know, every girl and every boy, when they take their uh, significant other to be or whatever boyfriend over to mama's house and daddy's house, they want to make sure that that, that thing right. You know, daddies look at you, you know, side eyes sometimes. You know, but one thing about mamas, can I get a witness? You know, mamas are how that look like mama over here with glasses reading and shit, not the way I should look at when she leaves. She said, mm-mm, baby, that ain't the one. You know, what you mean, mama? She said, mm-mm, baby, that ain't the one. And you don't understand why she don't like her. She don't, what does she do? Whatever, mamas know. Mama pick up on things. It's no, baby. Mm-mm. That ain't her. That ain't the one, baby. You know? Can I get a witness? Amen? I told CJ, I said, you gonna catch it. <laughs> you gonna catch it. Already had a little girlfriend in school, and his mama said, I didn't need that little girl. What you mean? Mm-mm. She fast, you know? <laughs> They're going to probably be like, we like Mr. Connor. His, his mama mean. <laughs> his mama mean. Amen. But, you know, to God be the glory. Amen. But he said, I'm coming back for you. He, I'm not going to just leave you stranded. I'm coming back for you. But here's the, here's, the, here's the second piece of that. Not only am I coming back for you, I've given you a comforter to keep you till I come back. Now, I'm not trying to put down anybody's belief. You know, whether you believe in Islam or Confucianism or whatever like that. But where is it that in your, their teachings that there is somebody here with them that is keeping them? Or where is it that they're saying they're coming back for them? And what is the, uh, I guess the best word to use, what is the, 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 the final analysis? When you die in your beliefs, what happens? Is there judgment? Is there eternal life? What? My, my God tells me what my final destination is. 
My word tells me that if I don't walk upright and live right by the word of God, that my eternal damnation will be my home. If I live right, then I will have eternal life. You, you, you pick that up. Y'all catch that? Damnation. Life. You, 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 you catch that? Life means continuum. It's living. Damnation. And listen what he says. I come that you might have life, which means that God and Christ requires of us. Somebody have to write that down. Say what Christ requires of us is to live. But in our living, he wants us to live holy. He don't want us to be dead. He don't walk around, want us to walk around here with a dead spirit. He don't walk around, want us to walk around here all down and out in Beverly Hills and depressed. He said, I come and I breathe life. See, what's one thing that people fail to realize? Life is a spirit. Our souls get judged. And remember what he told Job. He said, you can do everything you can, but you cannot take his life. Why? Because you didn't give it. I did. I am the giver and the sustainer of one's life. So one of the main things God requires for saints is to live. Is to have some form of life. Is to have life about them, that there, there's not a darkness, there's not an aura or a spirit of, 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 of darkness, but there's a spirit of righteousness around them. That's what God requires. God requires. God, 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 God inhabits. Hallelujah, somebody. That spirit of life. And he loves when we carry that spirit, and that spirit of life, you know what that spirit of life is? That spirit of life not only walks in belief, that spirit of life walks in, whole, uh, in not in holiness, not only in holiness, but it walks in wholesomeness. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are beautiful, whatsoever things are pleasant. That's what the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. That's life. That's life. You know, and it shows when you have life in you. Amen. So he says right here, uh, Thomas said to him, the one that doubted him, he said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Golly. See, that's what frustrates you sometimes. <laughs> I'll get there in a minute. But that's what really frustrates you. Can I get a witness? When you're around people that you think ought to know that they've been around you long enough that they should know something. Amen? That means that everybody that's around you ain't paying attention to you. Hmm? Ain't paying attention to what is being taught or what is being, so ain't learning anything. You can't be around somebody with your own agenda. Uh-oh, let me get that out. You got to have an agenda that if you're going to be with somebody, that's called a mutuality, which means y'all share things mutually and y'all grow mutually and y'all bond mutually and y'all share one another's ideas and friendships and one another's disappointments and joys and things like that. It can't be just... Every time I call you, I'm pulling off you, and I'm telling you about my problems, and I need money, but I need to share in your victories. I need to, when you're going through, I need to pray for you and pray you up. That's what, you know, it's all about when we are in this life. But, we, you know, you can't be around people that's all it's about is they pulling, 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 pulling. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, every day ought not be a day of hell. There ought to be some joy somewhere. You ought to call with just a praise report or just a good morning. How you doing? Drinking my coffee. What's going on? Can I get a witness? Watching the birds fly this morning. I was just standing on my porch. Can I get a witness? Catching the breeze. Can I get a witness? And when you have life, life affords you that personality. Now you ain't going to help me. When you have the love of Jesus in you, it affords you that spirit. Hmm? You ain't, and when you have that spirit like that, you don't have to fake it. It's real. You don't have to pretend. You ain't got limit. Let me, let me you ain't got to afford your way in somebody's life, or they don't want you. Somebody, God will put people in your life automatically. Hallelujah! Can I get a witness? 
I was, I had a guy inbox me today about something, and I, 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 and I, I, I responded and did it for him. And he said, listen, how do, he said, would you like to be on our foundation's committee? I said, well, if I have time, sure. He said, okay, stay tuned. And so what I'm saying, sometimes you ain't got to ask to be nothing. The Bible says your gifts will make room for you. People will seek you out based on your ability and different things like that. And that's why sometimes I just sit back and I watch. And I say, some people doing too much and ain't going nowhere. Trying to be too much and ain't getting nowhere fast. Let the Lord elevate you. The Bible says, except the Lord build the house, then they labor in vain. Let the Lord do what the Lord does best. He said, seek ye first. Follow me. I'm the way. If you follow my way, you follow my path, I've already left the Holy Spirit for you. And if you lead, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you. But if you follow after my footsteps and after my ways, there's nothing I will withhold from you. Whatever I desire for you to have, I'll give you. How many of y'all desire God to do some things? They ain't came yet. But you really want God to do some things. God said, I've heard your petition. God said, when you didn't even know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit made intercession and groaned for you. God said, you don't have to be, you know. Hmm? Can I get a witness, somebody? And so he says, right, he says, Jesus said to him, I am the way. Because he said, we don't know the way. You're looking at the way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this is beautiful. You're looking at the way. You're walking with the way. You've been talking with the way. You've been taught by the way. Hallelujah. You've eaten with the way. He said, I am the way. Huh? The truth and the life. No man come to the Father except through me. I mean, I can't give it to you no, no plainer than that. I am the way. What, what do you mean? You don't know what, where we're going. I am the way. You're confused because you want to be confused. Oh, y'all going to make me preach in here tonight. Huh? There's a few of us in here, but I still preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. You know, some people confuse because they want to be confused. You know, some people just don't want to get it. You say two plus two is four. But I thought if I put one plus one plus one plus one, that's four, that's four too. But two plus two is four. But I thought if I put one plus one plus one plus one is four, that's four too. But I'm telling you, if you just put two and two, you can get the four quicker than one plus one plus one plus one. But I don't understand. You see what I'm saying? You see how people make it harder than what it is? Well, I thought that God meant that. All God says, live. Live holy. Huh? Love your brother as you love yourself. Follow his word. You know, well, I, 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 well he means for me to stop, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing this and doing that. If you love him and you follow him, you ain't got to ask. It automatically walk off because he know your heart is pure and your heart is satisfied with his teachings and satisfied with his way, and God will take things away from you that you don't even have to ask. Yeah, you don't even have to ask, and God will just automatically take things. You say, I just don't even like that no more. Uh, you know, that don't, I don't even look at stuff like that or whatever. That. I don't even go there no more. It just don't appeal to me no more. Why? Because holiness have taken over your heart. You know? And see, not just to say, I just pray, pray for God to move Pray for God to give you knowledge of his word and, and, and for God to give you an input of that spirit like you need it. And when you get that, all those things will fall and God will bless you in such a way. In other words, Jesus said through his death and his resurrection, Jesus is the way to the Father. He is also the truth and the life. As truth, he is the revelation of God. As life, he is the communication of God to us. Did y'all get that? He's the revelation to God and the communication from God to us. The communicator. And Jesus came, basically told him, them, in order for you to follow me correctly and for me to be the way in your life, you got to die the flesh. Got to die. And sometimes people don't understand that. You got to give up some wrong for some right. It's as simple as that. You got to give up some things that you might have eternal life. Hallelujah, somebody. You know, and I don't know why people say, 
you know, well, you know, being in saved is this is that. Being in saved, you, you can be saved and enjoy your life. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Because, you know, after a while, you cannot be saved, and there are certain things you want to do, you don't do it because you can't do it. <laughs> Let me just be real with you. It ain't that you don't want to do it. You just can't do it now. So, you know, say, hey, get saved. Hallelujah. Save yourself. <laughs> Save yourself, baby. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. And I'm glad that Jesus is our communicator of God to us. You know? And then he says here, he says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Basically, what Jesus was telling him right then, he said, had you really known who I was from the get-go after you accepted me, you would have had to ask me that question. But I hope now that I have informed you, hallelujah, that you know who I am. But you know the sad thing about that, though, in some areas, uh, but Deacon and, and, and ministers and members, one of the sad thing about it is that if you are who you say you are, you can try the spirit by the spirit. Yeah. You know, he'd been with Jesus long enough and been around him long enough that he ought to have known something. Peter, who was the one who cursed, who cut a man's ear off, who was presumptuous, he was the one that spoke up and said, Thou art the Son of God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, son of Jonah. And he said, Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Hallelujah. Peter. Everybody else will cry. But Peter knew because what they thought Peter was, he wasn't. He was more in tune than they thought he was. Hallelujah, somebody. And he recognized who Jesus was. And that's when he said, now, you've been with me so long, and basically you didn't even know who I was. He said, but I hope you know now. Hallelujah. He said, no, my... He said, know my father also. Jesus came to reveal the father. To know Jesus is to know the father. He said, show us the father. And Jesus said to him, to see the father, yet Philip asked to see the father like Thomas. And Philip seems to have been slow to comprehend. <laughs> it's like the one, 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 one to get the phone. When all I done told you is two plus two. And there are some people, when you are a new babe in Christ, we understand that. That you don't understand certain things. We have to take you through what is called, uh, 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 what's the class on third? Um, foundation. We have to be, you have to build. You don't, you don't understand everything all at once. It's a growth. But if you tell me that you've been sitting up in the household of faith, Four, five, six years, even over a year, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, you've been sitting up in the household of faith, and now you're telling me you don't know certain things? Come on. And I tell you to read scripture, and all you're going to read is Jesus well. And then if I ask you to give me the uh, foundation of that scripture, give, give me some, 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 some lessons. Tell me what that meant, huh? What it meant? He cried, I guess. Why did he cry? He said he well, he cried. Why? See, you can't read something if you don't have knowledge of what you're reading. Remember what the guy, the eunuch, said to Philip. He said, how can I accept some man teaching? He said, do you understand what you're reading? And that's the problem we have in our, our ministries. I was at a funeral yesterday, and a uh, man asked, you know, I had to do the eulogy, and I asked the man to do the scripture. And the man got up, and he read St. John here, and he said there, he said, you know, whenever you see word, words in red, that's God speaking. And he said, and God said, I, was, I just sit there like, huh? You know, I did the crooked eye. I said, no. That's not God. Well, God is the Father, but that was the Son speaking. But when, you know, he said, that's what I heard. He didn't say what I knew. And he was bold. Ain't no read no Old Testament. He, amen. He was bold in what he thought because that's all he knew what somebody said. And what they said, they didn't know. But instead of studying for yourself, you took somebody's word for it. They were wrong, and now you're wrong. See, that's why you got to be so careful. 
as to who you follow and listen to. Because everybody, remember that sheet, that person, you're going to get to you. Everybody have influence on somebody. And you better make sure your influence know God. Yes, ma'am. Another example is AI. Yes. Yes. Hands down. Just yes. because you put a question up there doesn't mean it's right. Yeah. It's manipulative. You got the phone there, you say something. I don't understand. I said, what? I won't talk to you. <laughs> what you talking about? What? I don't understand that. Or that means, you know. And so they've gotten so sophisticated. <laughs> you talk, and the next minute you know you start talking about you hungry, and the next minute you know you're looking at Facebook, some of the advertising coming up about a steak. You say, hey, well, how they want a steak? Yeah. You know that thing, yeah, that thing I heard you, and I went through, and boom, they sent something there. Hmm? Even, well, I mean, I give them, give them credit to you. Talk about Jesus enough, they'll send you some Bible verses. Yeah, they got they got smart enough to put you put you in the, on the scriptures now. Jesus is an algorithm. Yes, sir. He's an algorithm. That's it. But what I'm saying is that all that he was teaching, there were those in the group, in the camp, that just didn't get it. Whether they couldn't comprehend, or whether they just didn't want to comprehend at that time. But then it looks like I don't think they was all sold out then because once he told them he was about to leave, fear and intimidation set in. It showed when they ran that they weren't bold soldiers and hid because they were scared. God needs bold soldiers. God needs soldiers that can come out and stand and proclaim the word and the righteous word of God. Somebody's going to come to the knowing the knowledge of God, but we got to get out there and we got to tell people. About the, about the God, you know, and, 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 and it's wonderful. It's wonderful that we can come in the church and we can dance. Um, a little fella asked me when I walked in, your baby boy, and he said, why are you always on the stage? I said, well, I got to be on the stage and sometimes and preach. He said, well, why you always dance? I said, well, because I'm happy. He said, you got to dance all the time? I said, well, don't you get happy sometimes? I said, aren't you happy all the time? He said, yeah, I said, okay then. You know, amen. And so it goes, we're going to drop because we know what Philip said, uh, Philip said. Jesus said to him, have you been with me so long and yet you have not known me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen my father. So how can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am the father and the father in me? And the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But by my Father, who dwells in me, does the works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the words themselves. And, you know, he said, I'm not speaking on Jesus' accord. I'm speaking, the Father's speaking through me. And I, and I think, well, I guess I'll say it. I think one of the things that's so sad today, when you look at uh, all, this, all this stuff on Facebook and TikTok and all these preachers, some of them want to take on the persona of God. A lot of things they say, God ain't, that ain't, that ain't scripture. That ain't God. You know? This, <laughs> the guy, they were showing the guy, he's a congressman from somewhere, and he was a um, Republican, he was standing in front of the courthouse last week with Trump, and they were showing him, they, they were laughing at him, they said, look at this. The, 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 the news people, they come and say, check this guy out. And he's standing up and he said, ain't nobody ever had a crowd biggest. The only person bigger crowd than Donald Trump was the Pope. And the people came to the Pope saying, save us and pray for us, Pope. And that's what people saying now, Mr. Trump, save our country, save us and pray for us. I, look, I, I, see, I see why they laugh at this fool. I said, y'all putting him in a dangerous position. Because you're putting him in the place where God's supposed to be. You're worshiping him. And one of the commandments, he said, thou shalt have no other God. And I tell people, respect me, but don't worship me. Can I get a witness? Don't put me in that predicament where God's going to get me. Because of y'all foolishness, you know, these people worshipers. And these men worshipers, these women worshipers. They can't even, you know, walk out the building, you know, all these worshipers. You know, thing. You know, I saw something today. I was someone. I said, you know, I was speaking to the person, and I looked. And the person said, you know, I think 
they got their bodyguard. And I said, let me, you know, all the people around, I said, let me see. Yeah, it is. They opened the door. I said, well, Jesus, who want them? <laughs> I said, well, who, who want them? What Jesus in the household of faith? We got to act like that? I said, foolishness. And I'm sad. Y'all don't get mad at me. There's a guy be on the thing. The thing, the black church gonna get mad at me. I don't know if y'all see that guy. You know, with things, the black church gonna get mad at me for a lot of that foolishness is in our churches. And I tell guys all the time. I said, black pastor, I've messed up the church with a bunch of foolishness and titles and bodyguards and Paul Burrows and armor Burrows and all of these ads, all this stuff, huh? When Jesus had those disciples, he didn't have them to serve him in the way that we're looking at serving. He had them to follow him to be servants. He was a servant. That's why he washed their feet. He showed them what it meant to be a servant. And when they tried to keep people away from the children, he said, Suffer not. Allow the children to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of God. When you are a follower of God, you become humble. You become a servant. And when you become a servant, God will raise you up and God will put things in your place and God will do. You don't have to seek out people to be bodyguards or people to be servants to you. God will put people in your place that they're genuinely, and when he's ready for you, will just bless you and that will be there, you know? Hallelujah. I was uh, 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 at a, uh, did a wedding, no, I, well, I did a wedding and I did something. And, 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 and I, I did, I had to be at a young man's um, installation service over in Chesapeake just uh, uh, Saturday after the funeral. And then I had to do a wedding at 6. And as I was, I, they knew I had to leave to get to Virginia Beach. And I excused myself out of the service. Service is packed is all day long. I did my part in the service. And one of the deacons walked up to me. He said, you all right, Pastor Carl? I said, yeah. I said, I got to go and everything like that. He said, okay, I'm going to walk you to your car. He said, man, God shouldn't be walking this car by himself. I said, I'm all right. He said, no, I want to make sure you get to your car all right. I didn't ask for that. Can I get a witness? You know? But that goes back to saying that sometimes God would just attach people to you. You don't have to act. God would just, God, God would send that. You know? Can I get a witness? I'd be at places and I'd do things and once I finish, I'd dip out and boom, boom, boom. say, you got away so much. They'll mail something. Say, we didn't bless you with something. I said, ah, well, you know, we forgot. We want to bless you. I, you know? It ain't all about that. It's about how we can minister God's word and how we can sow a seed. You know, how we can sow seeds. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. You know, I walk in places and people look at me and say, I didn't know you, Pastor. And I smile. They say, where's your church? I said, Big Bethel Road, New Hope. They say, oh, we got to come visit. You know, I don't have to boast and tell people who I am. You know, let your light speak for you and let people ask you questions about you. I've heard people say to me, you, you're a pastor? I said, why you ask me a question? You preacher? Why you ask me a question? Your voice, what's wrong with my voice? What you mean my voice? What you mean my, what you mean my voice? Why, why, what you mean? I, you got a preacher, what, how a preacher voice sound? And I get him, I said, how? No, I don't, I don't understand that. What do you mean a preacher's voice? My voice like anybody, no, there's something about your voice. And you, know, and you just laugh, you know? And I, and I tell y'all all the time about the story that I was in Richmond, short pump, getting my nails done. And the, the, the Asian lady, she said, you preacher? I said, ma'am, I'm not from here. She said, no, no, you preach. I said, no, I don't, I don't live here. I live in Hampton. Don't pass around. No, no. Yeah, but you preacher. And I, and I didn't say but two, three words. And this woman kept saying, you preacher. And I said, what? But I goes to show you that when you live right and you live righteous and holy to God, you're not. See, it goes to show you what happened with Peter. When the woman said to Peter, you speak as one of them. Touch your neighbor and say, you can't hide the anointing. Yeah, you, 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 you can't hide it. If it's in you, it's going to come out you. Hallelujah, somebody. And that's why it goes, it goes me, back to me telling you, you ain't got to overdo it. You know, sometimes you tell things. That one thing that CJ hates me to say to him, if he's doing something, he hates this word. When I say, you're doing too much, that bothers him. You know, you know, you know, he gets upset when I say that to him. And I just say, all right, CJ, you're doing too much. He don't like that word said, the statement said to him. 
But what I'm saying, some people sometimes they're doing too much. And if you just follow in the way of the Lord, the way, he didn't say get out the way or get in the way, follow me because I am the way. Huh? Things are fall in place. You don't have to create nothing. Hallelujah. And then men would come to you and want to know what, hey, what is it about you, man? You, a woman, you got a woman of God, a man of God, you got a spirit about you. You got just something about you that, you know, what it is. Hallelujah. And so he says right here, he says, <clears throat> he said, I'm not speaking to my own authority, but by the Father. And the 12th verse, he said, most certainly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, Huh? The works that I do, I being Jesus. He says, huh? He will do also. So which means if I'm a follower, you know, they always tell you sometimes you got to be a leader. But then people do, they follow folk and they start doing what folk do. Well, if you are a follower, then you ought to be doing the works that you are, the person you're following, which is that of Christ. It's as simple as that. You ought not have no hidden agenda. You ought to have the God agenda. And that is the right world. The way. I mean, he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. You can't beat those three. If you're following him, you get knowledge from him, and you get life from him. Man, well, how can you beat that? And he said, when you follow me, you'll start doing as I do. You'll act as I act. You'll teach as I You want to do the things that is required of you to do. And I just can't see sometimes, let me just, you know, sometimes when I see people call themselves in ministry or want to be in ministry, they want to be in something, but I, ain't, I don't see nothing pouring into them. They don't show. They're not thirsty. They don't have the hunger. They don't have, you can't preach on Sunday and tell me something when you can't be pouring in throughout the week. And I don't see the evidence of growth in you. I just can't sit up under you. Hmm? I mean, anybody can give, like I say, like they say about a football game, any, 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 any given Sunday, any good day, somebody can preach a good old sermon. They got them online now. You don't even have to pay for them. You know how to read, write, and know how to put a little antics with it, you can go ahead and preach it. Can I get a witness somebody? Amen? But when the anointing comes, the anointing makes a difference. The anointing brings power. The anointing brings healing. Based on my life in following the Lord. So he says here, he says, greater works than these will he do. Because I go to my Father and whatever you ask at, in my name and I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, he said, I will do it. Can I get a witness? Jesus had accomplished the greatest works possible, including raising the dead. And how could he say that believers would do greater works? The answer seems to extend of that the apostles did. And Jesus' work on earth was confirmed by the Palestine. The apostles would preach everywhere and see the conversations of the uh, the conversations of thousands. Conversions of thousands. And Peter's message at Pentecost brought more followers to Jesus than, than did Jesus. And that's why Jesus said, y'all would do greater works than me. And he said, Man, that greater works mean that you will be, you will reach more people than I've reached. You will be able to do things I've reached. And, and, and he was saying that in a way to show them that I'm Jesus, you know, nobody's going to, you know, I'm, but what I'm saying, th that you would do greater works. See, we have to teach our people and we have to inscribe in them that there are works out there. And God requires you to do greater works. Can I get a witness? And that's what it's all about. The work of the Lord. And so he says right here, he says that if you love me, huh? If you love me, amen, keep my commandments. Go ye therefore, huh? Baptizing me in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them my way. Keep my commandments. And my commandments is that he want us to go ye therefore. He want us to be followers because he said, I'm the way. But in order to have him as the way, you have to be redeemed. 
Paul couldn't have him as the way when we talked about that last week until he was redeemed. When he knocked him off his beast and he was blinded for three days and God told Ananias to go to a street called Straight and you'll meet a man there. And when he told him the man's name, Ananias got upset. Don't you know who this man is, Lord? He man that persecuted Christians. But when he said, lay your hands on him, when he laid his hands on him, the scales fell from his eyes and he told him. And then later on, he called him Brother Paul, a Brother Saul, Brother. A brother and a sister in the faith means that we're connected by the love of God. We're connected by the power of God. We're saved. And so, my brothers and sisters, one of the things that you really need to realize is that God sent another man to lay hands on the man. That the man, not only his scales from his eyes fell off, but that man was delivered and was saved. And so that's why when we look at the word greater works, God can use any one of us that we can lay hands on the sick, we can speak word, huh? to those that are in, 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 in turmoil and speak life to them forevermore. Huh? See, I don't want to just be a pew-sitting person sitting in church and say I'm a follower. I want to be somebody with some power. But I don't want the power to be about me, but I want the power to be about the Father. I want to be what the Word of God said that I'm supposed to be, that I attract men. I want to be like a light in darkness, that like light attract my bugs at night. I want to be able to attract folk, the lost, to the Word of God, and they want to know what must I do to be saved. Can I get a witness? But let me tell you one thing about being attracted to light. Everything that, 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 everything that comes to the light, sometimes when they get there, they don't like it, and they fly away. Well, that light, burn them up. Hallelujah, somebody. And when you're attracted to the light, you got to live by the way of the word. You got to live by the way of the Lord. He says, I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way. Any man come through, see, once see the Father, they got to come through me. And so he says, but if you love me, you'll keep my commandment. A lot of times people don't want to keep the commandments. A lot of people don't want to do, like I said earlier, they want to do it this way. Well, can we do it this way? Do I have to do it that way? Do I have to do this? Well, you know, I ain't got to come to church. I ain't got to fellowship. I, I, I can look at church online. You know? Well, I'm sitting in the barber shop day. A guy I know in my barber, he got a chair. I got a chair. We left and everything. We're talking. And I looked at the guy. I said, where you going to church right now, man? Where you, where you taking worship? He said, well, I've been following church online. And so the barber looked at him. He said, Bedside Baptist. And we all bust out laughing. I said, man, why you going to put the man out there like that? The guy bust out laughing. I said, why you going to put the man out there like that, man? You got to put the brother out there like that. And then they like that, you know. And I said, he'll get back there one day. <laughs> but as, as, as sophisticated as Facebook and, and Instagram and, and, and X and, and Twitter and all these things are, it cannot do when you are in the presence or in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Because in some people right now, I guarantee you, those technicians can tell you up there that that might be even a delay in what I just said. They might have got it in a millimeter of a second. Am I right about it? But when you're here, you're here right now. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. And any delay could be the worst delay. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me, somebody. You don't need a delay when it comes to the hearing God's word. And thus said the Lord, you need to hear it fresh. Everybody have a, you know, well, I can cook. Pack my food up and watch the service. Boop. Oh, I cut myself because you won't pay me. I can work. No, you're supposed to be working on that man's job. You're supposed to be watching me. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Can I get away? When you when you were in God's, uh, you were in a place where there ought to be that 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 that's a, a place of, of holiness and righteousness where you can hear from the Lord. You want to hear. You want to be there to hear. Thus saith the Lord. And then I need to take this and run with it. He said, "If you love me, keep my commandments." One of the things he said, you know, uh, how good and how pleasant a brother to dwell together. You know. And then he said that we are not forsake ourselves from assembling one with another. It's good when we can come together and we can assemble together and we can worship together. We can pray together. We can talk together. It's good when we can assemble. You know? It's good that we can come by, you go by places and you see cars full of folk and it ain't just on Sundays. We come in here and it ain't for funerals neither. 
You have more folk attend the funeral than they would Sunday morning worship. Huh? They say, ain't it strange you can come to a funeral in the middle of the week, in the middle of the day, 10 or 11 o'clock, and I ask you, well, can you come to Bible study in the middle of the day? But you'll come to a funeral in the middle of the day. Y'all ain't going to help me. Can I get a witness? Huh? Because Jesus even said one thing. He said, let the dead bury the dead. And he wasn't being rude. But he said, we got to do the Father's business. He said, we got to work while it's day, but when night comes, no man can come. That means death for the Christian. You can't talk about works when you can't work no more. Huh? And then you better work while you have the activities of your limbs and articulation of your speech. Huh? Clothing your right mind. Hallelujah, somebody. That's what work is all about. That's what doing the will of God, to do, to do the will of him that sent us. When you are a follower, you know, isn't it weird that people can follow after anything, any fad, and you, they'll start doing that. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Some people say, well, yeah, yeah, the new fad is you got to uh, 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 drink Pepsi all day. People be drinking Pepsi. But when tell people say, follow Jesus, mm. get a little, you know, get a little quiet. Because when I hear the word Christian and Jesus, I hear restrictiveness. I hear restrictive. But when you get to know him, he said it's free. Salvation is free. It ain't cheap now. But when you get to know him, he said, I come that you might have life more abundantly. He said, some of you all are in your stupor right now and you're bound. You're miserable. Some have money and don't have faith. Some have wealth and don't have a worship. Hallelujah, somebody. He said, but God, if you know him, he'll give you a joy that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. He says right here, he, said that, he says, he will give you another helper and he, and he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for the dwells with you and will be with you and I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit, the other name of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And the world can't see him because it's, it's an indwelling spirit. And that's why the word of God says that God is a spirit. And we that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Which means that we cannot worship God in the flesh, number one. And number two, you got to be real when you worship God. And I'll tell you that, and I'm going to close out why I tell you why you, got, you can't worship God in the flesh. the flesh. With the flesh, it is impossible to please God. Flesh and blood will not enter to the kingdom of God. That's why we must be born again. That is of the flesh is of the flesh. That is of the spirit is of the spirit. So when it says in truth, remember when it was um, Simon. Simon tried to buy, I believe, the gospel. He was a magician, and he liked what they did, but he tried to lie and act like he got saved because he saw the miracles and the ministry that uh, the disciples did and the workers of God did, and he wanted that. And so he lied and acted like he got saved, and he tried to buy it, but he didn't get saved. He wasn't real. And that's why the word of God lets us know that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. We have to be real with God, which he knows if we're real or not. Because he would not indwell in an unclean uh, uh, temple. But one of the things that God want to look at, and God look at, he look at our heart. And he want our worship to be real. He want our praise to be real. Today, I eulogized a, a, a lady here today. And her six-year-old little granddaughter sung a song. It's all about Jesus. That, uh, what's the look, uh, 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 Andre Crouch sung. And she still did. She sung her little song. And she told somebody when she came in, pretty little girl, she said, I'm excited about being in church today because I'm here for Granny's funeral. But I'm excited to be in church. And I said, a six-year-old talked about her excitement about coming in the household of faith. Y'all ain't going to help me. That's why the word said, child shall lead them. 
And we ought to have that six-year-old spirit that when we come into the presence of God, we come into his temple, we ought to be just like her. I'm excited about coming in God's house today. She didn't say I want the pastor or I want this person to preach me happy or to lift me up. She said, I'm already excited. If nobody else is excited, she said, I'm excited. And that's why we say, get all excited and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what we have to be. We have to have more excited people in the house. But I'm tired of contemporary spirits. Y'all ain't going to help me. And contemporary spirits have become familiar spirits where they become too familiar and too uh, 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 lazy. Hallelujah. And complacent. And complaining. Hallelujah. And they don't want to give to God. Well, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like going to Bible. I ain't feel like it either. Well, just like you would. Hallelujah. But he afforded me an opportunity. And you know what? Because I have humbled myself and because I have forgot about my flesh and I've leaned over to the Lord, Lord said, I got one more thing for you. Can I, God said, I've opened up another door for you. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. And see, this is what I want you to know. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you, or when you are obedient, your prayers are answered. An obedient heart received the manifold blessings of God. So remember that. Deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow Jesus. As he go, you go. Because he said, greater works will you do. Come on and give God some praise. God, our Father, as we stand, we thank you. We pray, God, for those that are sick and shut in but not shut out. Those bereaved hearts, those that are traveling this weekend, God, we ask that you would give them uh, grace and mercy and peace. And for somebody tonight that don't know you as Lord and Savior, God, we would ask right now that you would just come into their life. They would accept you as Savior. They would say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I confess my faults and confess my sins. Lord, I believe your son Jesus died on the cross for me and I accept him as my savior. If you said those words tonight and you meant that from the bottom of your heart, you're saved tonight. You can call us, you can text us, you can call us or, or come by and see us or you can go to somebody else's ministry and tell them I accepted the Lord on this the 22nd day of May and 2024 at 7.30 p.m. And I want to be baptized. I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I want to know the Lord Jesus as as my Savior and as my Redeemer. We thank God for all those who have come out and those God would give them traveling mercy and grace. God continue to heal, deliver, and not only New Hope, but every household of faith. God, we ask that you would bless that household of faith this evening. There'll be no lack in that in praise. There'll be no lack in finances. There'll be no lack in love, and there'll be no lack in worship. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to remind you this Sunday, there will be no youth church. This Sunday, there will be no youth church. Amen. God bless you, and we love you.